All right. For this next product launch session, we've already heard this alluded to a little bit with some of the questions earlier. Uh, we want to be in the places where decisions are actually happening. Now, as a developer, I would love to think of everything as running on localhost or whatever the easiest copy and pasteable tutorial is on the easiest setup uh, page. But that isn't the reality if you want to go and actually do uh, workflows in production and do meaningful automation. So we want to be able to give you the tools to be able to build for your workflows at the uh, places where you need to. And uh, to find out more about how we can do that, here's Luke. Howdy, everybody. Uh, nice to meet you. I am Luke. Uh, I am a tech lead and product manager here at Palantir. And I'm excited to chat with you all a bit today about some of our most recent product investments at the Edge. Um, first off, I just want to level set <laughs> with what I mean when I'm referring to the Edge. Uh, Generally, I'm talking about small form factor, low power, generally disconnected devices, the types of things that you see on the table here, your Raspberry Pis, your, your trucks. Um, <laughs> that one's not real, though. Um, but the types of devices that aren't inside of the cloud, uh, the compute that extends beyond that cloud's reach. And deploying and developing software for the edge is it's a hard problem. And I don't need to tell a room full of people who solve hard problems for a living that, well, they can kind of be a massive pain in the ass. Um, and I think this is for a lot of reasons. Um, but one of the biggest reasons is how hard problems fly in the face of our, our assumptions. And as an industry, we've made one rather large assumption. And it's that of, of cloud connectivity. Now. As with most assumptions, this makes sense entirely at face value. The cloud has been this incredible force multiplier that has entirely changed the way in which we build and do our business. But at the same time, over the years of embedding with customers, many of the folks in this room, it's become apparent that in a world that's ever building towards the cloud, so many of our hardest problems exist at the edge. Whether it's at Panasonic, uh, these might be old slides. It's OK. <laughs> uh, whether it's at Panasonic on the factory floor, where battery production requires millisecond level latency and uh, bandwidth constraints you know, can prohibit the use of cloud infrastructure, whether it's with our partners through the warp, uh, warp speed progress or program that uh, is revitalizing the uh, American industrial base and bringing legacy hardware investments online all the way to our work with the Warfighter, uh, the DoD, where connectivity can be sporadic, but the challenges of war are anything but. So how do we, as a room full of builders, uh, tackle this, this class of problems? And importantly, what can Palantir do uh, to help along the way? I think, as always, we should provide some good tools. And what better tool to start with than the one that kind of started it all, the ontology? So with that, I'm incredibly excited to introduce the Embedded Ontology. The Embedded Ontology is our lightweight hosting infrastructure capable of running the Foundry Ontology object system on nearly any device, enabling the creation of decentralized applications that can connect users across a mesh of different hardware architectures, all while interoperating seamlessly with core Foundry infrastructure in the cloud when online. Now, you might be wondering, why we actually care about running the ontology at the edge. And I, I, I think there are a lot of reasons, um, but I'm going to focus on three. We have some demos to boot. Um, the first is how it enables us to build the, these decentralized workflows um, and connect users through synchronizing their ontologies across a mesh of compute. The second is how it lets those users leverage the existing hardware, the existing devices that they already have in their ecosystem uh, even when they might be disconnected. And the third is how it allows us to slightly reframe the way in which we think about the ontology, turning it into a API layer for our physical world. But with that, let's dive into some demos. If we can jump over to my laptop, and we'll look at decentralized workflows. And also, if we happen to have the other slide deck, we can load it right now. <laughs> um, awesome. Uh, as a raise of hands, how many of the folks in here are back-end oriented. 
Okay, so you understand why I can't create pretty front ends. Um, <laughs> this is our OSDK application. And what you'll see is a copy of two of the exact same applications. The one on your left is just a standard OSDK app that's deployed in a normal Foundry environment. So normal ontology indexed in the Foundry ontology object system, and then a self-hosted OSDK app. And this OSDK app is stupid simple. It allows me to create these check-in points on a map. So we can jump in and create a new one. We'll say something along the lines of hello from DevCon. We'll create that. And this just calls the action inside of the pre-generated OSDK TypeScript bindings and actually creates an object in the ontology, which I can then go ahead and look at. Now, the application on the right is the same exact code, same exact application. But instead, it's running on this Raspberry Pi right here. Uh, this is just a Raspberry Pi 5 uh, that's connected to a battery pack and a router that's connecting it to our VPN. But importantly, we have the entire OSDK app as well as a full implementation of the Foundry object system running on board, meaning we can deploy this OSDK app to that Raspberry Pi with zero changes required in the code. And because, like I said, we're currently connected, the ontologies between these two points in our mesh, the Raspberry Pi and our cloud ecosystem, are synchronizing automatically in the background. So I can jump over to the local host version and refresh, and you will see the object that we created. And of course, this is, this is bidirectional. It's not just pushing down uh, changes to the edge. This is still a fully functional uh, application. So we'll say hello from edge. We'll create that here. And what's happening in the background is another new product that we're coming out with. And we refer to it as foundry object peering. And again, it's the way in which we synchronize these disconnected ontologies, these ontologies that exist on other form factors throughout a mesh, um, and allows us to create these collaborative workflows that tie together users who are on different points of compute to be able to work together seamlessly, even if they might be interfacing with different devices. Now, judging by people's faces, I would say like 30% of you are like freaking jazzed right now. Like you think this is really, like you, you definitely do. Um, but you work here, Joe, so that doesn't count. Um, the rest of you are probably thinking something along the lines of, this is great. Uh, I don't have a closet full of edge devices to make a mesh with. And I hear you. Uh, I understand you should try it. It's a lot of fun. Um, and they're relatively cheap. But you probably do have one of these, just a standard phone. Um, and this kind of gets to the second design principle uh, that we targeted when building the embedded ontology. And it's this idea that we want our customers, the folks using this, to be able to leverage the investments that they've already made, to be able to leverage the devices that they already have in their field. Um, and so I have a quick demonstration here um, that's actually going to be looking at uh, a bit of a disconnected workflow that's powered by an Android OSDK app running the embedded ontology. Um, so let me pull up this workshop here. You can see this one looks way better because it's workshop and it makes things easy. Um, but the story here is I am a technician that's deployed out into the field um, to do asset management. So I have assets all around the world and I need to go in, inspect them, collect information, report different problems, and then sync those back into my downstream ontology uh, and Foundry ecosystem such that they can be properly triaged, maintenance technicians can be dispatched to the area. Now, importantly, these assets exist in the field. Um, the field is not near the cloud, and it's rather disconnected. And so when I go out there, uh, I'm not going to have access to the same cloud infrastructure that I'm used to. So I'm going to bring with me an application. Let me jump into Android Studio here. We are back in the world of not as pretty UIs, but it's very functional. And this application allows me to do a very simple workflow. I can document uh, different information about the asset and then sync it back for triaging such that work can be uh, executed downstream. Now, like I said, uh, we're in the field. We do not have connectivity. So I'm going to simulate that by just disconnecting from the Wi-Fi on the phone right here. So you can see in the top left, we are in fact offline. So I'm going to go ahead and just take a photo. You don't want that. You do want this. <laughs> go ahead and take a photo of the truck. Did that work? That's fine. 
um, and will report some sort of issue. Um, the truck, seriously, is broken. And then we'll give it an asset ID because I need one. We'll go ahead and submit. Now, as you see, that submission was reported as successful. But we're also offline. Um, so what's happening here? Again, we are running the entire ontology just on the phone. So that submission was successful. That application, that Android application that's running on the phone, was using just OSDK to write to a completely local ontology. Um, and thus, the workflow succeeded. And you can imagine extrapolating this out to much more complex workflows. Anything you can build with the ontology and the OSDK can be run entirely disconnected. But this information isn't now just locked down at the edge. It's not a traditional edge investment where you pour a bunch of money in and all your data is now locked into a portion of your enterprise that you can't access. This is still just the ontology, and it's made to interoperate with our cloud ecosystem. So I can go ahead and just reconnect to the Wi-Fi. And what you'll see is, after a second, we boot on online. And the Foundry object peering is going to synchronize in the background. And I can jump back over to my cloud workshop. And you'll see that the ta task has automatically synchronized with my beautiful picture of a broken truck. Um, and so this will now go through the normal process and uh, resynchronize and, and uh, go through any downstream applications inside of my cloud ecosystem, effectively connecting my operations at the edge Oh, boy. OK, so remember that thing that we had with evals, where you can make sure that your LLMs don't hallucinate? Um, I'm not using that. And so <laughs> the truck has a flat tire on the front left side, which is completely deflated. It's on the side of the road in a rural area. Wow, this is really, really a problem, and we'll have to take care of it. Uh, but you can see how we can connect our operations in the cloud and at the edge. Enabling these workflows to stay connected, even if the individual users are not at any point in time, um, really bringing more capabilities to places that the ontology hasn't gone before. Now, finally, um, I'd like to chat a bit through the third way I think about the embedded ontology. And this one's a bit more abstract, so, so bear with me. Um, we generally talk about the ontology as a digital twin. You know, it's the nouns and the verbs of your organization. It's the, the API layer that you can interact with in the digital world. And I've always felt that the ontology was particularly compelling when it was used to model reality, the physical world, the tangible assets that I can point to in a room, the things that manifest physically, your, your phones, your trucks, your drones, your pies, whatever it might be. And not only what they are, but what they can do, the actions they can take, the way in which I can leverage them, the way they interact with their environment. So when you take this class of assets that almost lends itself to be modeled by the ontology, and you pair that with the fact that we can now deploy the ontology incredibly close to or even on the asset itself, well, it allows the ontology to go from just being a digital twin to these style of assets to functionally like, being these assets, being their API layer. And this allows you to expose them through anything that's ontology aware, whether it's your workshops, whether it's your OSDK apps, whether it's your AI agents, effectively giving them a portal to the physical world. Now, I understand I just said a bunch of nonsense. Um, so <laughs> we're going to look at another uh, demo right here. And this is the one that will probably work. I have a camera that is sitting on a roof somewhere, allegedly. And I would like to interact with it through Palantir, through the ontology. And so again, like I said, I'm going to model it in the way that I think about it in the real world. Uh, I, I have the camera itself, and you know, it's meaningful to me. It's a real thing. So I'll give some properties on it. Uh, you know, it's got a location, latitude and longitude, uh, a model, a serial number. But then it's not just the thing, it's, it's what I can do with it. And this particular camera is excellent at panning and tilting and zooming. And so I will encode that into my ontology API layer through a PTZ coordinate task. Um, and this essentially gives me the ability to hand the camera a, a geolocation, and it will point to it. 
Now from here, I can generate just your standard OSDK app, and I can take that ontology and deploy it out to something that's connected to the device. Now, in this case, this is just going to be on my laptop because I have a network connection to the device. But I just implemented like a stupid simple application that feeds telemetry from the camera, its connectivity status, things like that, as well as listens for the creation of these objects uh, running on board. So I can go ahead and just run this script here. Did my terminal bug out? I think it's working, things are just freaking out. Um, go ahead and run this here. And like I said, this is just the ontology, and it's the embedded ontology. So of course, I can interact with this entirely locally, but I also want to showcase how this is just the ontology under the hood. We can interact with it in the ways that we always use the ontology. So I can jump into something like just a normal workshop application, and using all of our pre-built-in widgets, uh, just drop the camera object directly on board. So you can see it renders here on the building that it's hypothetically placed on. And I can go to something that's recognizable, like this weird pointy building. And using just the built-in map widget inside of Workshop, go ahead and find my coordinate tasking application. And assuming our network latency isn't super bad, that action should apply, and we should see the camera actually move in real. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Seriously? <laughs> Let me check. The... Oh, OK. Unfortunately, I'm running through about seven network hops, and so we're going to see if this is actually going to work for us. Um, there we go. All right, so rerunning it, we picked up the ontology object that I created cloudside. It's synchronized through Foundry peering to my laptop, to the code that's running on my device, was then passed to the camera's driver and actuated fully through the ontology, essentially connecting the physical world with all of its cloud counterparts. And we don't want to just stop here. Um, the idea is that we want to push the ontology everywhere it's needed. I think Chad tweeted this morning that the ontology is everywhere, and we're, and we're taking that seriously. Um, we're actively developing to push the ontology to microcontrollers, the chips that exist in infrastructure all around the world, hoping to bridge the divide between the physical and the digital world, and importantly, expose it to our builders. So I'm very excited with that. We are introducing a private beta of all of this work and are actively looking for people to partner with. So if you have questions, you have ideas, you have use cases, just let me know. Thank you very much.